Well, hello everybody and welcome back to uh, Tim Time here. So today I'm looking at, yes, you've got the TS940 back there in the background working on another video for that, but uh, that's not what the video is about today. I have here a uh, ICOM, what is it, a ICOM ICSM6. It's a uh, desk mic. And it's compatible with the 746, the ICOM IC746 that that uh, I did a couple of videos ago. So this came in the box of goodies that I got, and uh, well, as you can see, it's already taken apart, and that's because I guess I half expected it to work, and I had temporarily moved the ICOM upstairs, and uh, I took the mic up and it didn't work. And then I was laid up a little bit so I couldn't really get down here to the uh, to the basement to do any work. So I started to take it apart upstairs thinking that it would be a real easy fix. Well, uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The main reason I'm doing this video is just to show you because I was trying to look it up and couldn't find anywhere. So basically how to get it apart. There's four screws on the bottom this plate, four screws and the little rubber feet and then these two screws hold this potentiometer in place. Take all this, all six of them off and you get to the bottom. If you look here there's a way down in there, I don't know if you can see it, I'll try and zoom in in a minute. These wires go up through the center and they're for the mic and then there's a nut. And that gets the, uh, if I can, there you can see the nut in there. That gets the uh, this adjustable neck off. I didn't need to take that off. But what I wanted to know was how to get to the darn element. And I couldn't find anything. So, I'm going to show you here in a second. And then if you ever have to do this, you'll know. Let me just kind of put, put it somewhat back together. Hang on a minute here. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Tim, why did you want to get to the element? Good question. So, let's see. I don't know if that's enough. Anyhow, so the chrome piece goes around this chrome piece with the screen on it. Let me see if you can see it if I move my hand like that. This chrome piece with the screen on it, it goes in here and it actually just threads in. Turn it in and show you here. As soon as I get my hands out of the way. But that that piece there. Now, I'm assuming someone tried to take it apart at one point because I could see kind of marks in this. Eh, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But they're not real deep marks, but there was a little bit of burring on here. Anyhow, I guess I kept trying to turn it and I couldn't turn it, then all of a sudden I guess either I ate spinach or in a moment of, of Hulk out or something, I was able to turn it counterclockwise. This spun off and then if you push the cable, the mic element will come out and then you can test. Now here, I swear I tested this before I pushed it out and I was getting zero ohms down here to where the mic connects. So that's the uh, shield right here and then the hook right there. I don't know, maybe maybe I thought I was, maybe I didn't even test it, maybe I dreamt it. What, for whatever reason, uh, when I plugged this into the radio, it was very faint. Like I had to turn all the way up and, and it really, there was no, almost no output. Uh, and the hand mic works fine. <clears throat> so, anyhow, you know me, I couldn't wait to take the darn thing apart. So I took it apart. Now one of the things that I found which may or may not have anything to do with it. These two pieces, and I'm going to zoom in here in a second so you can see them, so let me put them down here and you'll see what I have here. I'm going to zoom out, but the pieces are so small that... So here you have a little plastic washer and a little foam washer. They were tucked in there the plastic was right on top of the mic element and the foam was on top of the plastic and then they were in between 
the mic element in this. I'm thinking that's probably not the way it goes. Anyhow, you can see they're kind of all smashed up now from, I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. It's hard for me to see what I'm looking at when I have the camera like this, but they're all smashed up now. I would assume that this foam rubber piece goes directly on top of the element and the heavy plastic piece goes inside here. I couldn't find anyone that had taken one of these apart on the internet, so that's kind of why I wanted to do the video so that in case you take one apart, pay particular attention to that. Uh, I don't think I would put it back the other way it was. Like I said, this heavy, heavy plastic piece was on top of the mic element. And I just don't really like the way that fits. I think that belongs in here more so. If it even belongs at all. Uh, and then I'm going to put a little bit, just a wee little bit of glue on this foam piece. Because that's, you know, I usually glue them to the mic element. Let it set up a little bit and then just place it on top and I should be able to put it back together. Anyhow, once I check, once I got it apart and checked, and I'll show you, I'm getting an ohm reading. But you know, the thing was, is I was using it, these weird leads that I got, and this, this one lead doesn't always make as good a contact. Uh, especially, you know, if they've got the board coated or something, because you don't want to push too hard on it, because this lead's very, very, flimsy or thin, but that's more for getting on ICs, but, so I'm going to actually take it off. Uh, I do like it though. What I like about that, and I've actually done it to my other leads, is that it has this insulation that comes clear to the tip. Because if you're testing something on, say, like a 940, and you reach in here and you touch against something hot and something ground, ask me how I know, you could fry things. So anyhow, I actually, what I normally do is I have one on this too, it's just I use a piece from a, a piece of like number 14 wire, and I slide it down and only about an eighth inch of the tip sticks out. I don't have it on right now, but normally it's on there. Why it's not right now, I don't remember. But anyhow, I'll show you the, uh, we'll check it together, and then we'll have a, a record of what, what the own test is on the uh, electric microphone. Let me, I'm going to zoom out a little bit too. So let's see. Let me light it up. And you hear that noise in the background, that's the washer. So here's ground. And here's the hot. Wait, where is it? Here's the hot. And there's 1.5k ohms. 1.5k ohms. Now, if you notice, when I first put it on there, I didn't get a reading. So that might have been what I saw before, but I didn't get a reading. So, I'm going to put it back together and see if it works. And then if not, we'll go through some other diagnostics. But the main thing I just wanted to show you, since I didn't see any other videos, is what these look like inside and how to get them apart. Uh, whether you're going to be able to get this off as easily as I did without breaking anything, I, I don't know. But when you get things like that that you want to take off, you know, they do make pliers with like uh, plastic jaws. So get yourself a pair of them. All right, let me put it back together and we'll give, give it a test. Okay, so there it is all put back together. That's what it looks like. Um, and now to see if that, uh, that part being over the microphone is causing the low output. I don't have a lot of faith in that was it, but uh, we'll see what happens. There is a circuit for it in this as well. Um, there was one, something else I wanted to tell you about it. Oh, I, yeah, I did. I am tested everything originally from the plug, and I know that the push to talk's working. I know that the wires are, have continuity between the uh, the circuit board and the plug. So, alrighty, here she is, all put back together, and uh, the outcome's pretty much the same. But I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over it because when I go to the ICOM website, it tells me that this mic is not compatible with the 746. But some people on the internet say that they use it with the 746. So, uh, until I actually can confirm one way or the other, I'm not really going to tear into it much more. 
but uh, that's the story. I basically just wanted to show you guys how to uh, take the front piece off of these because I know that uh, on the Kenwood microphones they're a little bit tricky. I don't know if you can see this one over here or not, but uh, I have not taken one of these apart yet. Let me see, can you see it? I think I was looking at the this one's the M60. Was it the 50 that I had on the nine on the 820? I've not taken one of those apart yet, but you uh, probably got to turn this on. I think they glue them on there. So, anyhow, that's it. Hope you guys can use something off of this. And uh, if I do go a little bit farther with this mic or decide to try it on something, we'll give it a shot and and uh, we'll have it on the air. Thanks for watching.